Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the adventures of Eirendil, who today continues his search for information about the Ogma Infinium by traveling from Winterhold in the far north of Skyrim province down to the heart of Tamriel and the heart of the Empire, the Imperial City. Which, funnily enough, in this game, is the only location in the entire Imperial province. And uh, I'll explain why we're traveling here in just a minute. You enter the Imperial City, the heart of Tamriel, and the seat of power for His Majesty, the Emperor Uriel Septim VII. So, why are we in the Imperial City? Well, you may recall I wasn't having much luck finding rumors about the Ogma Infinium within Skyrim. Why was I searching in Skyrim in the first place? Well, it turns out I was misinterpreting some information on the UBSP.net website. That's the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages. And that is an excellent resource, but there are rare occasions when the information may not be 100% accurate or might be easy to misinterpret. And this was one of those rare cases where on the artifacts page, it says for each artifact discovered in, and it lists a few provinces. So for myself and some other people out there, our natural instinct is to say, oh, if it says discovered in these provinces, that's where you should go to ask for rumors about these artifacts. But it turns out what that really means is when you finally discover the location of the artifact, it will be in one of those provinces. But those provinces will not be a source of rumors for that artifact, at least not usually. I have seen at least one rare case where you might be able to get rumors about an artifact in a province where it might end up being located, but uh, that's rare. And even that time when I noticed an exception, that could be possibly because there's some misleading information in the UESP about provinces for that item. You know, people are fallible. Sometimes information on any website might not be 100% accurate or 100% easy to interpret. Anyway, the point is, typically, you can only get rumors about an artifact in a province where it will not be located. <laughs> so I have actually updated that UESP page to add a little bit more of those details about what is meant by discovered in and where you should go for asking about rumors. And the best place to go is in fact the Imperial City because no artifacts are ever found within the Imperial province. And so it is a good source for rumors about any artifact. So that's why we have come here. We probably could have found rumors about the Ogma Infinium within Hammerfell. Regardless, I just figured, well, it'll be kind of fun to go to the Imperial City, get rumors about the Ogma Infinium, and then scope out the city a little bit. You know, see what's going on, see if anything seems different now that Jagar Tharn is in charge, and also perhaps get a sense for what kind of defenses there might be in front of the Imperial Palace. A couple other things I've learned. You will eventually get rumors about artifacts from anyone who is giving you some interesting rumors. If you get someone who is not giving you any interesting rumors, then they will never give you any rumors about artifacts. Well, here we go. We've already lucked out. Well, there is an interesting little story I heard a few minutes ago from some chap in a tavern just southwest of here called the Lucky Dungeon. He said there was this book of incredible power called the Oglmethlum. Uh, the Utherlzninium. The Uglomth. Uh, the Ogma Infinium, that's it. Anyhow, he knows how to get to this book, but he wants some gold in return. Okay, so we want to head to the Lucky Dungeon. Thank you very much, my friend. Good day. So this might seem like a very dangerous, perhaps very foolish place for Arendil to travel to, but you could also say Jagar Tharn is definitely not expecting Arendil to come here at this time, because he knows that we're searching for pieces of the Staff of Chaos, so he expects us to be elsewhere. He knows that we're not ready to face him now, if indeed we ever will be, so he wouldn't necessarily have himself or his goons on high alert searching for me here within the Imperial City. So even these goons attacking me now, I don't think it has anything to do with my identity. They're just general ne'er-do-wells trying to uh, find people to rob. 
Now I need to be a bit more cautious. Now where might the lucky dungeon be? Silver Griffin. Come to think of it, it might be prudent to go ahead and stay at the Silver Griffin Inn, just so we can get back to daylight and not have to worry about my depleted Magicka. So in we go. The summer night is almost as warm as the day had been, and you enter the Silver Griffin craving something cold and wet. Cold and wet indeed, let's go ahead and order a white wine. So there are people milling about as the sun is just beginning to rise. We do still have a bit of the nighttime music. Excuse me. Go ahead and save again. Oh my, <laughs> look at that. We have encountered one of Arena's many mysterious bugs. I've never seen one that looked quite like this before. Now that was something else. Let's go ahead and jump right back into the game. It's a good thing we saved. Okay. Um, I'm not going to ask you who you are at this point. Uh, where is... Oops, not that one. Not that... Where is the Lucky Dungeon? West. Thank you. That was quite an interesting crash bug. <laughs> I'd never seen it make that kind of garbage text on the screen before. We do have a few things to sell as well. As soon as we find one of these equipment stores that's open. the lucky dungeon. Okay, now we have the location inscribed on our map. Cool shade and cooler drinks greet you as you make your way out of the heat and into the lucky dungeon, smiling at the serving wench who holds a mug of ale ready for the first thirsty man. Okay, well, here begins our journey to the location of the Agma Infinium. Now where is the innkeeper? We need to speak with him so that we can be interrupted by someone else. Excuse me. I don't mean to be rude, but go away. Okay. And you, sir? I'm here to drink. If you want to do business, talk to the bartender. Gotcha. cases, the bartender could be a bit hard to find. There we go. Excuse me. You feel a tap on your shoulder. Grummus stands behind you. 
I knew you'd be back. I assume you're now prepared to give me 530 gold pieces to learn how one may find the Ogma Infinium of legend. <laughs> He's speaking as if I've spoken to him before, which I have not, but uh, okay, whatever. Yes, I'll pay for some information. Excellent. In the province of Skyrim, sure enough, lies an ancient tomb. I found it quite by accident while escaping reavers of the frozen wastes who sought to enslave me. Falling into this forsaken place, I found tablets and scrolls which all pointed to the location of the Ogma Infinium, said to increase the reader's innate attributes to godlike proportions. I have no need of such attention, for I would rather be rich and anonymous. I have, however, inscribed the location of that tomb onto your map of the continent. It's called the Mines of Ratchis. Journey there, and you can recover those maps for yourself. They will show you where the Ogma Infinium now lies. Be warned, these things of power seldom grant their gifts without a price. The Infinium has appeared many times through the ages. I wish you luck on recovering it as it appears now. Well, thank you. Beautiful. So at this point, how much gold do we have left? Over 10,000. Nice. Let's go ahead and exit. And our only remaining task here is to do a bit more of the reconnaissance I mentioned. Erendil is very curious. Not only to see just how everything and everyone here is looking in general, you know, the state of things, and, and for the most part it seems uh, like normal. Yeah, which makes sense, you know, this new false emperor is not going to change too many things too drastically in too short a time. Uh, he's just going to try to hold on to power and continue to make it seem as if he is Uriel Septim. If he changed things too quickly, that would endanger his position. So there we have the palace, and if we attempt to go any further... <laughs> well, it's kind of funny how it's a, it's a little floating sprite there. If we attempt to enter, we'll get a message, I believe. The Emperor has no time. You are turned away at the gate. Luckily, they do not recognize me. So... At this point, we might as well go ahead back to the province of Skyrim. Here, to the mines of Ratus. And here we are. Still slightly shielded. I do fear our shielding may be rather limited, though. our strongest shield spell is this force wall. wielding a dicotomy. Ok, 
kill this Minotaur through the wall. Sorry, silly little Minotaur. This is not your day. See you had a friend. Die, foul wizard. Servant of evil forces. That noise was... I don't quite recall. Could that be the noise of a spider? I'm not sure. Sneak up behind me.
It is kind of funny, this quest design, the idea of someone knowing where I can find the location of something else. You know, if he had seen that information or had access to it, you know, why didn't he just record it or keep it to himself and then he could just sell that information directly. But of course, the reason is that the designers behind this game, they kind of like the idea of uh, giving the player multiple dungeons to go to, so pretty much everything in this game, not quite everything, but a lot of things in this game involve this double dungeon process of going to one dungeon to find the location of another dungeon. And by the way, one other interesting thing I've learned just recently about some of the janky jump controls in this game. If you want to do what they call a running jump, the mouse position matters, even if you're not using the mouse. Like you can, you see how this cursor changes as you move the mouse around the screen. Um, you know, you can left click with the mouse to actually turn or move in the directions that it's showing. And if you're doing that, you can hit J, the jump button, at least that's the default jump button, and you will jump forward if you're moving forward, and you'll jump farther depending on how fast you're moving. But uh, if you're just moving with the arrow keys, the position of the mouse still matters. So the mouse needs to be above the bottom of the screen, but also it needs to not be the X targeting cursor. It needs to be showing an arrow, a directional arrow. And as long as it is showing an arrow, then if you're moving and you press J, you will do a forward jump. Or I guess maybe a backward jump if you're moving backwards. And that can be a bit surprising, you know, that's not the most intuitive thing. So, like if we're moving right now, like if I were to move forward while the cursor is just the X and press the J button, I'll, even though I'm moving forward, I'll actually just jump straight up, like here. Just jump straight up. But if I'm moving forward while you have an arrow showing, and it doesn't have to be the forward arrow, it could be any arrow, it could be over here to the side. J will allow me to do a forward jump, just like that. And I'm going to try jumping backwards now. <laughs> nope. It does a forward jump even if you're moving backwards. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, but that can be a useful thing sometimes when you're trying to quickly jump over, um, you know, a stream of water or anything else like that. While there are enemies nearby, you might want to do a running jump instead of trying to awkwardly do the shift J forward jump while you're standing still. So just be aware that you need your mouse to be somewhere up here but outside of the center so you don't have the X cursor showing.
Anyway, we want to get to the other side of this dungeon, I think. Oh, hold on. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So I think this is where I started, right? So actually, I'd already found a path down and I didn't quite notice it. I think I was assuming that was where I'd start. So yeah, let's go back there and check that out. After we've gotten a little more loot here. dance minotaur. Amulet. Nice. Let's go ahead and drop some things of little value. We have an enchanted longsword, very nice. Nice, looks like we found yet another ebony amulet. Not a high value one, that's fine. There's our jump. And. Well, I can't help but do a tiny bit more exploring here. Sure enough, we have stairs leading down. And it sounds like we have enemies nearby. Yep. Let's see if we can get even more fully shielded. And 
happens nearby. We know that. Okay, that's close enough. And now we will also be getting more treasure because we went up and down the stairs a few times. I don't really try to do that intentionally. The only reason I'm doing that up and down stairs stuff is for a different type of exploit, I guess you could say, um, which is, you know, just wanting to get more rested up in a somewhat safe way. I don't feel bad about doing that. You know, I think taking advantage of some aspects of a game like this, which is a very difficult game, I think is perfectly acceptable. It helps to make up for some of the other aspects of the game that are a bit unfairly difficult, such as the somewhat janky controls and other things about ways that enemies can sometimes unfairly be able to kill you very quickly. The thing we're looking for will probably look like parchment, a scroll of some kind, or it might just look like a treasure chest. Okay, let's do a running jump. Not bad. Uh oh. That's not good. Who's casting spells? Uh, I see you there. I bet you can't reach me very well from there. Okay, maybe you can. Maybe I should try to rest down here. Uh, that may or may not be a good idea. Already, we see work. And is that the orc? Yeah. Hmm. No, 
comprarlo, ¿no? seeing the enemy, but uh, okay, we'll move along. Wow. A lot of loot, thanks to that treasure exploit I mentioned, of going up and down the stairs multiple times. just sort of an accident of how they programmed the spawning of loot. Now I heard something casting a spell at me again there, but still not seeing anything. Fully healed. So maybe I meant to go down even deeper. I didn't think that would be the case, but uh, once again, I may have misinterpreted things on my map. good to try to collect some more treasure regardless. Cast a fire dart. No, in fact, let's just run away. I do not want to face a zombie. Last time when I tried to fight one, it took a very long time to do any significant damage and it still managed to kill me. You know, I never managed to kill that zombie that I faced in a city at night once before. Oops. Here we are, we'll go down deeper, save again, well, after we check that we're not diseased, good. Things interesting. Let's go with the water first.
the controls in this game are, of course, one of the more unfortunate aspects of it in terms of people coming to this with a modern gaming perspective. It was made at an interesting time in gaming history, you know, hence that sort of blend of approaches to movement where some people might want to move by clicking with the mouse in certain directions, other people are going to want to use the keyboard, and yet they were still accustomed to using arrow keys instead of WASD. You know, that shift had not yet occurred. And unfortunately, the way they handled all these controls was rather rigid. You know, they don't give you options to change those controls within the game. There are limited capabilities to do remapping of the keys through DOSBox. And so there is a mod that takes advantage of that, although, as I may have mentioned before, for, for very recent versions of DOSBox, in other words, if you're kind of using the uh, staging line of DOSBox builds, uh, that mod doesn't seem to play well with these more recent versions of DOSBox. And I'm actually planning to look into whether I can fix that at some point. Because I know for many gamers, uh, they may not be willing to get used to these old-fashioned and somewhat cumbersome controls that this game uses. It is a bit awkward even for me sometimes. But for the most part, I think, you know, once you get used to it, it's not too bad. So like doing that running jump, for example, if your hands are big enough, um, you should be able to, while moving forward, reach over with your pinky and hit the J key. Oops, I need to have my cursor higher. There we go. <laughs> that running jump again. Again, a bit awkward, but it is manageable. Hello, Minotaur. Also, for those who may be curious, at this point they had not yet employed the idea of having skills that increase as you use them, so casting spells does not have any appreciable effect on your leveling or your ability to cast spells, you know. Um, Instead, your skill with magic just sort of increases as you level up, but it has nothing to do it has nothing to do with whether you've been casting spells or not. Uh oh. What do we hear? Spiders. Luckily we don't need to fear them too much. As a high elf, we are immune to paralyzation. They still can be annoying buggers, though.
I may go ahead and take advantage of some of my other spells here in the near future, such as Sanctuary or Invisibility. This is getting a little bit dangerous. Not too bad. That's not good. That is not okay. I'm not interested in facing any zombie. quickly apparently. No fair. Oh wow, we can go down further. Um, I haven't done a lot of artifact quests in my days of playing this game. So, maybe this is the way they usually are, or just sometimes, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and uh, save here. And what I mean is, I'm not sure if it's common to have artifact dungeons or quests related to artifact quests. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's common to have them be so many levels deep. give us a high chance of not being bothered or targeted by enemies for a while. And in a case like this where the dungeon goes so deep, we're really going to wish we had some kind of teleportation spell, but that type of magic does not exist in this game. They call it a mine. A mine! This is no mine. This is a tomb.
Uh oh. How dare you. Looks like he's building an axe. Nice pantaloons, by the way. Very stylish, aren't we? A battle mage, perhaps? Oh, he's leveled up. Six points, that is fantastic. Both of more and two endurance. In fact, go ahead and put all that into endurance. Our max health is now up to 72. Level 10. Beautiful.
Hmm. Lizard man. How's it going, lizard man? How does it feel to be a lizard man? Okay. Interesting. What if that is actually the location of the item? <laughs> right where it looks like a stairway down otherwise would be. But well, we can go and check that again a little later. from two at once, I'm not sure. Dang it. I think I accidentally cast another spell just then. Um, shield. Inventory is full. Plus 10 to speed, that's interesting. A little bit tempting. That might be better than a mere minus 1 to AR. I don't remember when I picked up that bracelet. I guess probably one of the loot piles, but... Uh, yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and wear that bracelet of speed. Speed up to 66. The tiny chance these short bows could be enchanted. So we'll check those out. We have two enchanted long swords at this point. But no such luck on the short bows. And we want 
want to risk resting here. I suppose we better. That's good. Hmm. You know, I don't like ghouls. They bite, cause disease. But if I can kill this around the corner, maybe I don't need to worry about that. Five minutes later. Finally. Shielded and healthy. Just for fun, we'll go invisible for a while. Let's head back to this other side. I think we may have missed it last time we were over there. Oh, I saw something there. No, it's not here. Dang it. Look around here. Oh, spider. I think that spider's going for us. Let's go invisible again. Sir, don't mind my footsteps. Maybe here. Well, some good loot. That's worth something. A little cool. down around that way. Yes, I think 
so. That should be it. You have found the map that leads to Agma Infinium, somewhere in the province of Somerset. You inscribe the location onto your map of the continent. Very nice. Now, let's get out of here. I think invisibility sounds good again. And perhaps a bit of a pass wall. Still shielded, that's good. So I just want to cut across east. Very nice. Uh oh, that I did not intend. Okay, buddy, let's do this. Mace. I wonder what class you are. Says he's wielding a flail. Okay, maybe. Let's drop a few things. Let's see what bracelets we got. Ah, plus ten to endurance. Take that over speed. Minus four to AR. Oops. Plus 15 to agility, we'll keep that belt.
Invisibility is our friend. Still invisible. Would be interesting if these trapdoors actually led somewhere, huh? Any more treasure we can grab? Perhaps we should just move along. Wow. Hey, lizard man. How you doing? some password. Don't mind me, spider. Excuse me.
Sorry, lizard man, you were in my way. And out we go. Now to Somerset Isle. The dungeon of Traggerby. Okay. Well, it is near to Eben Stadmont, Old Falls, and Riverfield. We'll go ahead and travel to Eben Stadmont. You have arrived in the village of Eben Stadmont in Somerset Isle Province. The date is mid dis 30th of Hearthfire in the year 30 or 390. It took 74 days to reach your goal. The village of Somerset seems quiet, unaware of your arrival. The people here seem very friendly. Excellent. A beautiful sunny day here on the gorgeous Somerset Isle. Home to all the High Elves, later to be known as Altmer. And first things first, let's find a shop where we can sell some things. Excuse me. Where is the nearest store? Didn't catch that. Southwest. Unfortunate Dungeon. <laughs> nice name. Enter the Mage's Guild, a world where nature holds little power. Outside, leaves are falling and plants are dying back into the ground. But in here, strange flora lives year-round, competing for space next to the scrolls, potions, and other mystic apparatus that crowds the Guild's shelves. I don't feel a particular need to buy any new spells or additional potions. For now, I think we can go ahead and spend a night in one of these inns, perhaps the Green Cup. The townsmen have met in the Green Cup to celebrate a good fall harvest. Their exuberance is infectious. Oh great, you say to yourself. I'll probably have this stupid drinking song in my head all day. I think we are ready. Let's save right there. And venture into the dungeon of Traggerby. So here we are. A 
we are immediately faced with a ghoul. This should be the current whereabouts of the elusive Agma Infinium. Assuming no one else has gotten to it first. Which of course they haven't. Video game logic being what it is, we don't have to worry about those kinds of possibilities, generally speaking. I hope my dagger hasn't been taking too much wear and tear. Let's check on that real quick. Condition is worn. Mm. And my buckler is slightly used. It's a little bit unfortunate, but I think we'll be okay for one more dungeon. A new torque. Not as good as our current one. The one we have might be adamantium. I'm not 100% sure. But I think that's right. One thing you sometimes have to worry about in some Elder Scrolls games and role-playing games in general is whether there might be some buggy behavior related to the boosting or lowering of stats while you're already equipping an item that boosts or lowers stats. Um, I don't think that's going to be a concern in this game for the Agma Infidium. I haven't read anything that indicates that, so... I don't think I need to worry about that, but I'll keep an eye on it. Staff? stains on the floor. This might be a decent place to rest. Oh, we have orcs.
Perfect. Go ahead and go invisible for a while. Normally I do want to slay a certain number of enemies to gain experience and level up and all that, but in some ways I may want to avoid doing too much more leveling before I've gotten that boost from Yagma Infinium. I'd like to max out my endurance so that I get the maximum possible bonus HP at each level up. That's the main thing I have in mind. Okay. So here we are. <laughs> Pardon me, lizard man. Would you mind moving? If not, it comes to this. Hopefully we don't have to descend to new levels, but we'll see. Why do you Minotaurs always have to be such bullies? A belt? Another belt. Of course it's nice that belts seem to always be enchanted in this game. Hmm. I'll keep my belt of agility, thank you very much. Are there no mundane belts in all of Tamriel? Well, perhaps they wouldn't bother showing us those, and if so, yeah, I'm fine with that. No need to waste our time with too much realism. Oh no. Not a zombie. Invisibility. Let's get out of here. Still healthy, not shielded. Let's just move along this way for a while. Skeleton. Thank you. 
I was calling this the dungeon of Tragerby. It might actually be Tragerby. The A's and O's are very similar in this font. I've noticed a lot of people do take advantage of a mod that uses a clearer font, but uh, I don't like the way that one looks. So I do put up with this uh, nice looking, but sometimes slightly difficult to decipher font that they used in this game. It's really not that bad for the most part. I love the atmospheric music and sound effects in these dungeons. It's very effective in my opinion, and the visuals are quite good too. You know, for their time. perfectly well for the information and mood and atmosphere, etc. that they're trying to convey. Here we go. As you can see, I don't know if I've mentioned this explicitly before, but typically, wherever the entrance is that you came in from, the next stairway or whatever will typically be in a corresponding spot on the opposite side of the dungeon. You know, fairly close. It might not necessarily be exactly like equidistant from the other wall or whatever, but relatively close. Now let's see what we can do here. I'm going to cast some uh, Force Wall. Not bad.
coil. Further down we go. Secret door. Haven't seen one of these in a while. Oh my. Foul mage. Are you perhaps here for the same item I seek? Or guarding it for some unknown reason? Perhaps you have no idea that that powerful artifact is even here. No matter. again. Too many secrets. So many secret doors. 
you recognize that line, too many secrets? Do you happen to know what movie that comes from? It is perhaps not a super famous movie, but it's one I like a lot. It does have its share of fame, critical acclaim. Sneakers. An excellent tech focus heist movie. Check it out if you've never watched that. Oh my. drop things here. This corridor. an item mark of healing just in case Six gold pieces on that spider. Don't cast any more spells. We 
need to find a better place to rest. Not bad. Poison. I believe we have a mark of pure poison. Yeah, yeah. Let's just use that real quick instead of using spell points. that. I'm not sure. Hmm. Actually, let's go ahead and cast the spell. Great. And we're still shielded. Not too bad. Hopefully we can rest up again soon. Can't rest. Let's go ahead and uh, bust through this wall. Not enough spell points. Well, fine, that's what potions are for. Store power. Let's go to the side. The wall 
walls here are thicker than I thought. Dang it. Maybe I can rest now, who knows? Enough spell points, dang it. Okay, I hate to be drinking so many potions, but oh well, this is fun. Ugh, I should have chosen just a little bit to the right, dang it. Oh, what a waste. Okay, fine, maybe I should load. To give us this save. Nope. Hold on. Yeah, I guess I haven't saved again. Unfortunately, it created some new enemies to spawn. Let's double check this one. Nope. That was earlier. Oh good. Better luck this time. And in fact, let's go ahead and just go here first. I believe I hear a lizard now. Oh. <laughs> Hi there! Did you just pop out of a wall? I'm sorry, lizard man. This day is your last. You are no match for Eorendil. I see no enemies. I must have heard something. Hello, work. Gotcha. And luckily you can't seem to get me. Ah, we have found an enchanted longsword. Very nice.
you a spell sword, perhaps. We are not in a good situation right now. to cast a shield? I don't think so. Good. Indeed, a spell sword. Healed. Goodbye, rats. And soon, goodbye, Minotaurs. See, I want to go somewhere around here. But for now, I'll continue down this hallway just for a bit. Spider mope. Okay. Invisibility. Let's just move along. Since this game, there have been, of course, many developments in the lore behind these great artifacts like the Agma Infinium and other items, people, locations, etc. associated with this game. I'm not an expert on that sort of thing, so I'm not going to try to wax eloquent about the nature of the Agma Infinium and the Daedra behind it. I think it's Hermaeus Mora. Many of you may know more about it than I do because you may have completed that uh, Skyrim DLC that does have a lot to do with Hermaeus Mora and the Agma Infinium. I started that DLC, I never did get around to finishing it, so... Is there a way... Oh. 
that is a difficult one to get into. That's probably where it is, is right in there. Let's go ahead and make some good use of Passwall here. But anyway, yeah, I'm not super familiar with how the events of that DLC unfold. Regardless of the exact details, the idea is, of course, that the Ogma Infinium, well, it was written by a wizard named Xarxes or something like that, and but still had something to do with that Daedric Lord I, that, or Daedric Prince. Again, I don't know all the details, but it is, of course, some kind of tome of deep and perhaps some would say forbidden knowledge. So it can be risky to play with such a thing. Oh, there is a platform here that looks like it would be perfect for holding a Daedric artifact, but I see nothing. Can't destroy that wall, huh? What about this one? No? Have you taken it? Have you taken the Ogma Infinium from that pedestal over there? So I have need of it, for I am on a quest of great import. For the long-term well-being of all men and mare. have an enchanted play home, that's nice. Could it be? Perhaps right in here. Either that or another stairway. Save again. Go ahead and say right there. And let's take a look at our stats. Now, currently, some of these are boosted by items. I'm willing. My agility is boosted by 15, I think. Endurance by 10. Willpower by 10, I believe. Thanks to my silver buckler of willpower. Steel dagger of agility. Oh yeah, I've got a Steel Dagger of Agility that's giving another plus 10 in addition to this Belt of Agility, so 25 total for Agility. Bracelet of Endurance, yeah. So again, we have 42, 70, 76, 90, 56, 86, 50, 55, 
Well, let's go ahead and see what this Ogma Infinium can do for Eärendil, the High Elven Mage. The Ogma Infinium is a tome of knowledge written by the Ageless One, the wizard sage Zarsis. All who read the Infinium are filled with the energy of the artifact, which can be manipulated to raise one's abilities to near demigod proportions. Once used, legend has it, the Infinium will disappear from its wielder. And yes, the uh, spelling of Xarxes or Xarxes uh, has changed over time. There could be variants of that name, you know, that's no big deal. Let's go ahead and apply these 50 bonus points. So here we see our stats without the bonuses applied by our items, so that's good. We should... Oh... I guess... Since we do have that item boosting endurance, I could choose to leave this at 90. But it is a little tempting to just top that off, since later I might want to change that for a different item. I'll think about it. We do want strength to increase. Boost intelligence, increase our spell points. Agility a little bit. Now for the rest of these. I suppose. And speed. I'm okay with Aerendil just having kind of a average personality and average strength. That's fine. All of these I can continue to boost as I continue leveling up and so forth. I could try to get the Agma Infinium a second time. I don't think I'll bother with that though. I don't feel a need to be that overpowered. And in any case, this is looking pretty good. I like it. Everything is 50 or above. Excellent. So of course we don't have the item in our inventory because it is consumed as soon as it's used. And we have used it. And Rendil feels much changed from the experience of reading the Agma Infinium. A strange tome it is. Strange, empowering, a bit disquieting, but in any case, this will greatly assist him in the difficult task he has before him of defeating the battle mage Jigarthar. Now we just need to try to get out of here. I wonder, can I not use items while I'm swimming? No, I can. Okay. Now then. Hmm. So that's where it was. Agma Infinium. Very interesting. Now if you take a quest for the Agma Infinium, you might get a very different dungeon layout. I have no idea. Probably many possibilities, uh, many different dungeon locations and layouts that you might get for any particular artifact quest. Let's go invisible again. And I think as soon as I get back to civilization, <laughs> excuse me, orc. <laughs> hey there, nice pose. <laughs> Nice shield you got there. Um, as soon as I get back to civilization, I will end this video. For we have been quite successful in our quest for the Augma Infinium. And if we look at our stats now, 
Look at that, endurance 100, agility 95, willpower up to 80, thanks to the items we have equipped. Fantastic. Okay. This is an interesting place. This dungeon of Trogarby. Possibly a relative of Trogdor. hear spells being cast in my vicinity. There you are. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and see this through. Face a mighty elf mage who has just become far mightier. I think you have made a mistake. Wow. 
one gold piece. Okay. We're almost out of here. Suddenly, Lizard Man. Perhaps he was using an invisibility spell. That might serve me right. I have snuck up on a couple of Lizard Men recently. Not the nicest thing to do. I think this is the last, but, well, maybe not, there might be one more. Let's go ahead and go invisible. And get this done. Just curious enough to do a tiny bit more dungeon delving here on the way. I certainly don't need more in the way of loot. Then again, can you ever have too much? Goodbye, spider. So let's see here. It 
it is nice to now have greatly increased spell points. I can cast more spells than before. So I suppose I could do some pass one if I want to, but uh, that shouldn't be necessary. Just for fun, let's take this path. Got a little more treasure. Inventory's full, of course. Okay, well. That might be enough. Sure, let's go ahead. Off we go. And on to future adventures. Now, follow me more closely the main quest. Huh. We still see the mines of Rattus there, that's interesting. I wonder how long it will take before that goes away. Maybe it never does. We still have Bias's catacombs as well. Hmm. We will be wanting to go to the Fortress of Ice. First, let's make a stop at Dawnstar. 48 days, we're doing quite a bit of traveling lately. You have arrived in the city-state of Dawnstar in Skyrim province. The date is Middus, 23rd of Sun's Dusk in the year 3rd Era 390. We bid you welcome to the city-state which greets the sun as it begins its journey, Dawnstar. Well, if you say so. And we have spiders. Isn't that great? Let's go invisible again. Find ourselves a safe and pleasant place to spend the night. It's 1.47 in the morning. Thirsty Galley. Well, here we go. On this freezing autumn night, the Thirsty Galley seems especially inviting. You smell apples baking in the kitchen and look forward to your first draught of ale. Oh, that smell of apples, that puts me in the mood for some cider. I hope he has some. Let's chat with some folks. By the White Wolf, do I look like I want to be bothered, High Elf? Oh, yes, the uh, customary friendliness of the Nords. You seem like a nice enough high elf. Why don't you run along now? Of course, uh, in this game, folks in inns and bars, they tend to be unfriendly in every province. Hi there. The bartender will be more than happy to help you. Just move along now. And you? By the har father. No offense, high elf, but would you mind stepping a little upwind of me? Oh my goodness. Well, hello there. Can I at least get some friendliness from you? A man called Hania the Mage nervously draws you aside as you approach the bar. I need help, young High Elf. I am supposed to get a vial of blessed water back from an agent of mine in Conclave of Justice. If I don't have it by Turdus, 24th of Sun's Dusk, I will lose a good deal of money. Unfortunately, I cannot get the vial of blessed water myself. I will give you 180 gold if you get me the vial of blessed water on time. Do you agree? Well, frankly, Erendil has far more important matters on his mind at this point, so he declines. Really? You won't help me. Then do me one favor. Don't let anyone know what I talked to you about. Goodbye. No problem. Let's go ahead, enjoy a bit of cider, and why not? 
Let's, uh, let's follow that up with a little bit of stout. You finish the stout, thankful for a safe haven. Indeed. We'll get a room. For one day. Eight gold, please. And that will do it. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more. Consider supporting me at patreon.com slash the drake. Take excellent care of yourself and everyone around you. Do good, be healthy, and I'll see you next time.